Welcome back to Sean's Stance. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, turn on that notification bell so you know when these videos go live. We do also go live on our Instagram at Sean's Couture at 8.15 on weekday nights. Be sure to join us live, get in on the conversation and ask your questions. Today's topic is, did social media determine the Olympia? What do you think? As always, if you'd like to come work with me, suitsandposing.com is where you have to, do, to go. We do hair, makeup, suits, and posing. We do all the fun stuff when it comes to competing for women. Before we go into our topic this evening, which is in regards to social media and placements on stage, I want to start doing shout outs for our sponsors for Cuties Carping the Stage. So we have several that are signed on. So tonight's shout out is going out to Liquid Sunrays. Liquid Sunrays is sponsoring our event again. They have sponsored our event every single year since the beginning all seven years so we really really appreciate everything that liquid sunrays and Marilyn do for us every single year Marilyn comes and she does demos and she talks about how to get the perfect stage tan uh, and she's just they're just an awesome company awesome customer service and an amazing product too uh, my entire competitive career I used nothing but liquid sunrays once I started using them my first year I used a different company because that was all that was available but as soon as I started using liquid sunrays I have used nothing but liquid sunrays ever since so I really want to thank them very much for literally supporting us since the very beginning so thank you to liquid sun rays and those of you ladies that are coming you will get to meet Marilyn uh, you'll get to test out their products all of those kinds of things ask all your questions all your burning questions for her and uh, all sorts of other fun stuff too so thank you again to liquid sun rays uh, you got your suit today yay awesome awesome I love to hear that great um, okay, so now that we've got a bunch of people logged on, we are going to talk about this particular topic. Uh, she is, Marilyn is amazing, absolutely. We are going to talk about this particular topic, which is uh, social media and placements. So I got this question a few times uh, oh, because the weekend. Uh, specifically, I believe that somebody was doing some commentary at some point. Um, I'm not sure who, but I heard this from one of the girls that asked me the questions saying that the ladies that were up in the top five, top six, top call out, that kind of thing, the reason they were there is because they have a higher social media following than some of the girls in the lower call outs. Well, I am going to just call BS on that one right now. <laughs> so, and I'm gonna prove it. I'm gonna prove it to you guys too, I'm gonna prove it. So um, it is not at all related to placings how you do at any show, your social media does not play into that at all, period, okay? Um, and I'm gonna go through some of the girls that were like top Olympians and things like that, some that were just on the Olympia stage and did not place and show you how this theory just doesn't hold water. Um, so actually when you look at the top five, right? And just going to their Instagram, you know, Instagram pages, that kind of thing. So that's what I'm, where I'm going off of, I'm going off their Instagram because that's where we are, we're Instagram, right? The, out of the top five, the one that has the most followers is Laura Lee Chapados. She has the most. And I think I have her on here somewhere. What did I pull her up? There she is. So this is Laura Lee. So Laura Lee has 362,000 followers. Okay. So she has a, a really, really good, really healthy following on her social media. But when she first started getting popular in the IFBB, she was like nobody on, on social media. She had barely anything on there at all. I remember it specifically because nobody knew who this girl was. She just came out of nowhere and started winning shows in the pro league. So I would argue that she started winning pro shows and took advantage of that and started growing her social media following. Not the other way around. Not the other way around, right? Her first year out of the gate, she came in second at the Olympia. So she was this girl that literally came out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, she's top two in the world. It did not have to do with her social media following because she had very, very little social media following at all at that time. Now, since then, she has taken advantage of her platform and she's grown that quite a bit. You know, she has a great YouTube following as well. All of those kinds of things. 
Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, applaud her for that, that she really took advantage of her, her, her platform. She took advantage of what she was, uh, what she was doing in the pro league and everything like that. But it did not happen the other way around. It did not happen the other way around. Okay. And again, she has the highest social media following. Um, actually, no, I take that back because hang on, let me see. Where is Issa? Issa might have more. Let me see. Um, let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Um, Issa, Issa Pacini actually has more. So I take that back. Issa, who took fifth, who took fifth, has the most, right? Now, of course, she took, she won the Miss Bikini Olympia title. So therefore, that probably helped her quite a bit right there. But again, I would venture to guess that it was chicken and the egg kind of syndrome, right? It was not the actual social media following that got her into that placement, right? It was the placement that then earned her the social media following. And I'm going to back this up too. So East out of the top five has the, um, the highest uh, social media following. So uh, Laura Lee is second right behind her. So Issa has, you know, 500,000 something. And then uh, Laura Lee has 300,000 something. You know who has the least amount of followers in the top five? Anybody venture to guess who has the least amount of, top of followers on Instagram in that top five? Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me before I give you that answer. I'm going to give you a minute. Give me a minute to answer it for me. Who's got the least amount of followers in the top five? Somebody. And I misspoke on, on Issa too, actually. Actually, we'll get into that too. Sorry, my bad. Not Jennifer. Nope, not Jennifer. Nope, not Jen. Nope, not Jen. Not Jen. <laughs> Have I said not Jen enough? Everybody's guessing Jen. Everybody's guessing Jen. But no, it was not Jen. Maureen. Maureen has the least amount of followers in that top five. And here, this is why, this is why this theory just gets blown out of the water because Maureen was the breakout star this year, right? She came out of nowhere, right? I had her predicted for top five, but she wasn't even in the Olympia last year. And this year she comes in and places fourth and she has the least amount of followers in that top five, the least. So already that theory of you have to have a huge following and things like that in order to place well, in order to place in the top five, boom, gone, out the window, right there. Yep, it's Maureen, yep. Some people are so pressed they're buying followers, exactly. This is one of the reasons, we're gonna go into all these things as we go through this, we're gonna go into all these things. So Maureen is actually the one that has the least amount of followers in that top five, and she was the one that was the breakout star of this year's Olympia, in my opinion. She was the one that came out and just blew everybody away. So okay, now we've got that theory completely wiped out, just with one person alone right there. Okay, now the second least amount of followers is Jen, Jen Dory. She has the second least amount of followers, okay? And she won the title. She still has a healthy following. Again, none of these girls have bad followings by any stretch of the imaginations. They, they, they all have good, good followings. They all have a good amount of people that follow them and, and pay attention to what they do. But if we're talking about, you know, the, the, you have to have X amount of followers in order to play so well in the Olympia, this doesn't hold water. It just doesn't hold water, right? Jennifer Dory has 168,000 followers. Again, great number. Not saying anything bad about that. When you compare it against the other girls in that top five, it's peanuts. It's peanuts. And I did misspeak. Issa Pacini does not have the most, most in that top five. Ashley Kaltwasser does. Ashley Kaltwasser by a lot has the most. She has 1 million followers. So... You know, Ashley's been around the block for a long time. She's been around as a three-time Olympia winner, that kind of thing. She's been in the public eye for a very long time. There was a period of time where she wasn't competing and she was completely focusing on her social media and things like that. So, you know, she's done a good job of growing that following for herself. So she has a, a million subscribers, but that didn't win her a title. That didn't win her another title. If this was based on social media, she has more than double of everyone else in that top five. Of everyone, everyone else, I think in the whole freaking Miss Bikini Olympia total, she has more than everybody. And she didn't win the title. She didn't win the title. Okay? Now, again, they all have good followings. Don't get me wrong. That's not, I'm not saying that any of these, these people are slackers, right? 
let's get outside the top five. Let's get outside of the top 10, right? Um, so one of the least, actually the one of the least amount of followings that we've got in that top 10 is Deiraja. Deiraja placed sixth and she has 32,000 followers. She has a very low amount of followers in comparison to everybody else in that top 10. Very low. And she still plays sixth. Right outside that top five. Right outside that top five. Again, the theory of you have to have a higher social media following in order to get into that first call out, blown out the water. Gone. Right there. Right? Um, somebody that has a lot of followers was in the fourth call out, which was Gabby Macias. Gabby has over 100,000 followers. She has 109,000 followers and she was in fourth call out. She was in fourth call out. Right? So she's one that, that again, blows that theory out of the water. Let's look at um, Adriana. Adriana from Poland. She has 137,000 followers. I believe she was in the last call out. I believe she was in the last call out. She has more followers that I say. More, I think she's got more than, than Jen Dory. Is that right? I think she's got more than Jen. Where's Jen at? I missed, Jen, I missed where Jen is at. Let's see. Raja. No, Jen's got 168,000 and Adriana has 137,000. So, but still. And she, Adriana was in the last call out. Last call out, right? Um, let's look at Aaron Stern. Aaron Stern's been around for a long time. Two time Miss Figure Olympia champion. She barely placed 15th. Barely placed 15th. 257,000 followers. Okay, so when somebody comes to you and tells you that you have to have uh, X amount of followers, you have to have X amount of traction or whatever on your social media, it's bullshit. Right there. BS. It does not matter. It does not matter. Right? And again, I believe that a lot of these girls have gained a platform from competing, not the other way around. Not from, from their, they, they don't have to have it in order to place well, but because they place well, they gain it, right? It's the opposite. It has nothing to do with their social media following as to how they actually place on stage. It has to, has to do with how they look, it has to do with how they've actually played the game that year, right? I can't imagine the judges even having time to associate what they're seeing on stage with the social. Exactly. That's the next thing I'm going to get into right now. The majority of the judges at the Olympia are not on social media. And if they are, they do it just to promote their show or whatever the show they're going to judge at or whatever. A lot of them promote shows, things like that. So they'll do that kind of thing. They're not sitting there scrolling on Instagram all day. They're not sitting there on YouTube. They're not doing those things. They're not. The majority of judges are in their, you know, 50s-ish and, and older, it's a totally different generation of people. <laughs> like they're, they're not doing the things that the kids today do on social media. They're just not right now on the, uh, on the other side of that is if you are doing something that is not appropriate on social media, or maybe you're bad mouthing the judges on social media, or maybe you're showing physique updates on social media that aren't the greatest and things like that. Those kinds of things can come back to bite you. Character things can come back to bite you. Not following, but character flaws can come back to bite you, right? Where do these rumors come from, do you think? Sour grapes. People looking for excuses. It's the same thing as the politics excuse. It's the same thing as politics excuse. Like, oh, that girl beat me because she knows so-and-so and they know so-and-so and they know so-and-so. It's the same thing. It's excuses. It's excuses. It's reasons to justify. Bottom line is you got to be the best one on stage that day. That's the bottom line. Yes, JM sees everything. He sure does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you got to be careful about that aspect of for sure. For sure, you got to be careful about your character. 100%. 100%. You know, one of the judges went to the press conference last year at the Olympia 
and some of the stuff that went on, the things people were saying at the press conference, affected that judge's view of some of the of some of the competitors on stage, some of the things that they said. So that particular judge decided not to go to the press conference or listen to the press conference anymore. Because at the end of the day, you gotta remember that judges are human. Judges are human, right? And they still see you as a human being. So they do see what goes on on social media when it happens in a negative light. And that's not a good thing. So you do have to be careful of your image. You do have to be careful of how you speak and being professional. Because those kinds of things do affect how people look at you. They just do. It's a human aspect to the sport. So I tell people all the time, you got to remember the golden rule. Can't say something nice, don't say no, nothing at all. If it's not constructive, if it's just pulling somebody down, if it's just being a jerk, leave it off of social media. Leave it off of social media. Leave it alone. You know, go talk to the person in private if you got an issue with somebody. You know what I mean? There's no reason to splash it all over social media. Because all it does is come back and look bad at you. Bad on you. That's all it does. So those kinds of things you do need to be mindful of. You have to act like a professional. You have to act like a professional. Right? It's a still professional organization. Must be mature and have good character. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. You know, and that, that goes a long way too. When they're looking for somebody who they want to represent the sport, they want somebody that can be a professional at all times. You know, be a good human being at all times, right? So again, just think about this as a business. Would you do these kinds of things in front of your employer? If you wouldn't do those kinds of things in front of your employer, then you probably shouldn't be putting it on social media. Right? Just think logically about these things. Think logically about these things because they can affect you. Your following and how many followers you have and all those kinds of things doesn't. Perfect example in the wellness division, Yurishna has 2.5 million followers on her Instagram and she took fourth. If followers could buy you an Olympia title, she'd have one wrapped up. Just saying, right? So instead of finding excuses, instead of finding excuses why this person, you know, won over you or whatever, go back to the lab and start doing some more work and get better. Get better as, as an athlete. Get better as a professional, right? Those things will make you actually excel in the sport versus being pissed off over somebody who has more Instagram followers than you thinking that that's the reason why they beat you. They didn't. That's not the reason. It's not the reason. It's just not. It's really simple to, when you start breaking that down to see that. I think the best example of that that I just showed you guys is Maureen. I mean, I can make an argument for Maureen winning the title of Miss Olympia in a year two years, that kind of thing. She could win the title real easily. And she had the least amount of followers in that top five. And again, I could make an argument for Dayraja being up in that top five and she had the least amount of followers, period, of the top six. So the good thing is, is they have a platform that they can grow on now, right? The reason why girls perform better at the Olympia is because of how they play their season. Let's use De Raja as an example, right? De Raja has won a bunch of small shows, which is great. That's awesome. They get her to the Olympia. That's what she needed to do to get to the Olympia. Great. The smartest thing that De Raja did this year was step into Tampa. That was the smartest thing that she did because she came out with that second place next to Issa. Beat Jen, beat Laura Lee. That got people talking about her as a potential top five. That was the smartest thing that Deiraja did all year. Those are the kinds of things that get you from being in third call out at the Olympia to first call out at the Olympia. Those are the kinds of things that do it. Playing the strategic game of getting yourself in front of the hardest competition, the toughest competition, and showing up and bringing a great package when you do it. 
I mean, think about that for a second. Deiraja came in and she beat who is now the current Miss Bikini Olympia. That was a smart move on her part. Right? Those are the kinds of things that you need to be doing as a competitor. So let's say, you know, again, if you're a if you're top pro, you're winning pro shows, things like that. Next step, go into these big shows. Go into New York, go into Chicago, go into Toronto, go into Tampa, go into these big tier, these big tiered shows where you're going to get noticed. That's what's going to push you up into the top 10 and the top five, not your Instagram following. Showing up and bringing a great package every time you do is what will get you up there. That's what's going to get you noticed. Showing up when it counts and great, bringing that best package, that best version of you when it counts. Social media doesn't matter. Like somebody else said, these judges don't care. <laughs> they don't see that stuff. They don't sit there and scroll on that stuff, right? It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Any questions, you guys? Any questions on this? I wanted to give you guys a really easy way to dispel this myth, <laughs> to dispel this rumor, and to show you point blank it's not a thing it's just not it's just not every girl that's that's in the, the pro league that's in a, a, a top olympian that's in the olympia has a decent social media following so you just can't break it down to oh well that girl's got a hundred thousand followers so now she's gonna be in the top five no it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that mm -mm. nope but I just, again, wanted to dispel the rumor that you have to have this incredible social media following in order to do well in the, in the pro league. And it's just not the case. It's just not the case. It's not. Okay. Saying social media affected your placing is the same as stacked class comment. Absolutely. Sure is. You guys know how much I love the stacked class comment. You guys know that. <laughs> but it's true. It's just an excuse. It's the new politics excuse. Social media is the new politics excuse. It's not, it's, it's not a valid one. It's not a valid excuse. It's just not. You gotta play your game smart and that does not include social media. That includes getting on the field and playing. Getting on the field and playing is how you do it. Play in the biggest and hardest stages. That's where you gotta play, All right? Okay, guys. Well, that's it for this evening. So if you have any other questions, feel free to type them below. But I am going to take this particular live feed and I am going to put this one up on YouTube because I want to put it together with those uh, screenshots that I took of these social media account accounts so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you can go follow these girls, all of them. Go check them out. You should probably probably list them already. If you're not, you should be. <laughs> right? Um, and, you know, again, the more that, like we've, I've been saying with the YouTube thing, like the more that we support each other and we build up the sport, the better everybody gets. And now you know it doesn't affect their placings. So you can follow all the people that you like. <laughs> right? <laughs> Facts not to brag, but placing top 10 of Nashville in like 2,000 followers, definitely not a thing. No, it's not. It's definitely not a thing. Social media is not a thing. It's just not. It's just not. It's not something that affects you on stage at all. There were so many breakout stars this year at the Olympia that just came out of nowhere, you know, in other divisions too. You just can't say that. It's just, it's laughable. When people say things like that, it's just, it's an excuse. It's an excuse. Or they don't really know how things work. That's part of it too. People like to make up excuses when they don't actually know how the judging works and they don't understand the criteria. They like to make excuses up like that too. But the bottom line is it's an excuse. It's not the truth, right? Okay, guys, that's it for tonight. Um, and if you want to work with me, suitsimposing.com is where you have to go. And like I said, I wanted to give Liquid Sunrays a shout out tonight for sponsoring uh, Cuties Conquer the Stage again for the seventh year in a row. So thank you so much to them. Uh, for those of you that are interested in getting on the live stream for Cuties, we do have that registration available too. So that link is in our bio now. You can put your name and email address on there uh, so that you have access when we do open up ticket sales for the live stream. Okay, have a great night. See you back here tomorrow. Thank you again for joining us. And if you haven't done so already, please 
comment, like, subscribe, turn on those notifications, show us all the support that you can so we can keep this content coming your way. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.